Hi, my name's John Brentnell and I'm a retired deacon uh, living in Berry on the south coast of New South Wales. I began my placement uh, with the Liverpool Plains Resource Ministry area, uh, which included the congregations of Gunnedah, Corindai and Werris Creek, and I was there for, for just, uh, just under three years. And that time roughly coincided with uh, the time when the Frontline Action on Coal Group, uh, otherwise known as FLAC, was established and built its campaign against the Whitehaven coal mine in the Laird Forest at Malls Creek, uh, just out from Narrabri. I'd um, had a growing concern about the environment for some time before I went to the northwest, and uh, this had been stimulated by uh, the uh, Al Gore movie and In Inconvenient Truth which uh, I actually screened in Berry when it first came out. Uh, two people came on that night, um, but not, no members of the congregation. I, I discovered uh, that in Gunnada there was a, a Catholic priest who was um, very uh, social justice minded and was uh, quite opposed to any new fossil fuel, fuel extraction pro protests. And he'd, he'd been trying to recruit uh, some of the local churches and, and ministers to issue a public call on the state government to protect farmland and wilderness areas and water resources uh, from those kinds of activities. None of the other ministers were inclined to do that, but uh, I, I said to him that I would, and eventually uh, one other minister did. And we issued our statement, and um, Ron Perrett uh, who was the, the Catholic priest, um, had uh, contacts with all of the local radio, TV and print media in the northwest, and um, our statement went public in December 2012. So um, in a um, cartoon in the Corindai newspaper just before Christmas, uh, we were depicted as the three wise men. Then in uh, February of uh, 2013, we had a... Um, Presbytery meeting of the New England Northwest Presbytery, and um, I put a proposal to them that the Presbytery should issue a similar call to the one that the three of us had issued in, in Gunnada. I was quite surprised at um, how quickly and how easily that proposal was passed. There didn't seem to be any dissent at all. And um, after we'd um, passed that resolution, somebody jumped up and said, well, we've done that, what are we going to do next? So after some discussion, we decided to take a proposal to uh, the next Synod meeting. And um, that uh, Synod in 2013 uh, did pass uh, that proposal that, um, that um, the moderator write uh, to the Premier with a similar call to protect uh, farmland and wilderness and water resources from the effects of um, coal and CSG exploration. That was... Um, quite an environmental synod because it was at that meeting that um, synod also uh, decided to uh, divest its um, fossil fuel shares. And it was uh, the first to do so, I think, and since then other synods and the assembly have uh, passed similar resolutions. In the meantime, um, I'd become connected with a group that was um, concerned about CSG. They were mainly farmers who were alarmed about the prospect of a gas pipeline being constructed across their properties. And quite a few of them lived um, around the Mullally area, and so they called their group the Mullally Gas Pipeline Accord. But um, as time went by, their concerns uh, widened to be not just about the pipeline, but about uh, the whole issue of CSG extraction and its effect on the agricultural industry uh, and as well as the local communities and the global environment. And so I attended meetings of that group through 2013 and participated in some little pop-up protests outside the, the Santos office in Gunnada and um, uh, quite a big protest out in the Pilliga Forest near um, some sites where Santos was doing some work there. That was in February of 2014. Interestingly, uh, Santos had heard that um, the ABC's TV cameras were going to be there, so 
they gave everybody the day off work. There, was, there wasn't any activity for the cameras to film. Then, in March of 2014, I participated in a protest outside one of the entrances to the Whitehaven coal mine site in the Laird State Forest, as I said, at Malls Creek. Uh, this had been organised by Thea Ormerod, the President of the Australian Religious Response to Climate Change, uh, with the acronym ARC. And the protesters that day included uh, lay and ordained people from the Catholic Angling, Anglican and Uniting Church denominations and, um, and a member of the Buddhist faith. And uh, three people were arrested uh, that day uh, for taking part in that protest. They were uh, Thea, uh, Gil um, Burrows and uh, Byron Smith. Involved in the next protest in June, uh, once again out in the Laird Forest. A 44 gallon drum that had been cut in half and um, had a, a cross shaped uh, lock on device um, fitted into it, um, concreted in. Um, as I was kneeling there and, and with Byron on the other side, um, we put our arms into the cross and wrapped the locking cable uh, cables around our wrists and, and snapped it closed. And all the while I'm thinking, I wonder how long it'll take. Uh, for security to, to discover us. We did find out later that um, they'd timed the event to coincide with the uh, shift change over time for the security guards, so that gave us a, an extra few minutes to, to get uh, set, settled into position. Um, at this point someone said we should pray, and uh, so we each took turns to say a prayer, and those that have seen the, the little video that um, Flack and Ark um, have uh, had on their websites uh, will have seen us um, there kneeling in the middle of the road uh, trying to think of, of words to say in a prayer and I must admit that um, at six o'clock uh, in the cold my brain wasn't working very well so <laughs> um, my prayer was a bit hesitant and the contrast with Byron the PhD candidate alongside me who always seems to know the the right words to say at any point uh, was uh, pretty dramatic and it wasn't long after that that the first truck uh, came down the road and uh, discovered our roadblock. I was a bit anxious about uh, what sort of attitude the, the truckies uh, would have towards us but um, I was pleasantly surprised that um, they all seemed to be uh, quite chatty and when they were offered uh, cups of tea and pieces of cake they were happy to accept those and some of them even said that um, they agreed with our cause, uh, but a job was a job, so they drove trucks and delivered equipment for the mine just to, make, to earn a living. And I guess um, a lot of the reasons that I do that I did those things um, would be pretty much the same as, as the other protectors there. But underlying all of, uh, all of what I've said uh, to this point is uh, my Christian faith. Um, I sometimes say to people that I believe that all Christians should be environmentalists and activists. And um, I base this on, on a number of things, uh, including the Hebrew and Christian scriptures. Uh, there are lots of um, uh, verses that remind us about the, the responsibility that humans have for nature. Um, places like Genesis 2.15 and uh, 3.17-19 highlight that humanity is called to be the gardener and tiller of the earth and to have the task of keeping it fertile and productive. And this emphasises the need to care for rather than to exploit and plunder the earth. Romans 8.13-28 tells us that the whole of creation and humanity long and grown for perfection and liberation. Violence against creation caused by disobedience and greed will have to be redeemed in Christ. And there are lots of verses in scripture that tell us about God's attitude towards creation. Genesis 1.21 says that God delights in the diversity of species and pronounces them good. God values and cares for even the smallest of creatures as we see in Matthew 10.29. 
creation should be treated in a way that will allow it to be preserved and to regenerate. De Deuteronomy 22, 6 and 7. God sustains creation. Psalm 145, 15 to 16 and Matthew 6, 26 and 30. God's will was that all species should be preserved so that they could regenerate. Genesis 6, 19 and 20, 7, chapter 7, verse 3 and chapter 8, verse 17. And God has covenanted not to destroy creation as we see in Genesis 9, 8 to 17. I guess the umbrella for all of that for me is uh, love your neighbour as yourself. And we, as we know, that uh, first appears in uh, Levit Leviticus 19, 18. And uh, then it appears in Matthew, Mark and Luke, where Jesus tells us that it's one of the two greatest commandments. Paul says that it sums up all the other commandments. And James calls it the royal law. The writer Sally McFaig asks, what if we understood oneself not to stop at the edges of one's own body, but to extend without limit to include everything that is? What if the neighbour is not only the person next door, but all of creation, everything that exists? What would it mean to love this neighbour as one loves oneself? Like many other Christians, I interpret the word neighbour to include not just the people who live next door, but all of humanity. Not just the ones who are alive now, but the ones in the generations to follow. And I also include all living creatures and the environments in which they live, such as oceans and forests. I feel that by protesting about what is happening in the Laird Forest or the Pilliga Forest, I am loving my neighbour. I'm proud to be a member of the Uniting Church, which since its inception has taken seriously its role as an agent of care for creation. And it's issued a number of statements um, since its very beginning uh, to that effect. Uh, one good example, of course, is the 2006 uh, National Assembly call on the church to reduce its own greenhouse gas emissions and to advocate for governments to implement policies to reduce Australia's dependence on fossil fuels. I'm proud to be a member of uh, Uniting Earth Web and Uniting Eco Group. It was uh, the Eco Group which sponsored the divestment proposal to Synod in 2013. And in the last couple of years, we've produced a couple of leaflets setting out the church's position on CSG and coal. I'm also a member of um, ARC which has members from the Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist and other faiths, as well as Christians, of course, and that's helped me to realise that care for creation is a part of just about every religious faith. I see this as a social justice issue as well as an ecological justice issue. It's a matter of justice for my neighbours, the people of Kiribati and Tuvalu, the farmers and residents of Mulls Creek and the Pilliga, and all the other communities threatened by dirty coal and gas. And of course the koalas, the frogs, the birds and the other creatures living in the Laird and Pitaka forests. I'm convinced that as a Christian minister, a father and a grandfather, I've got a responsibility to do my bit to ensure that the environment that my grandchildren and great-grandchildren have to live in is bearable and sustainable. But, um, how do you keep going uh, in a campaign like that? And, and that was interesting for me because I'd been listening to um, the podcasts that have been um, prepared for this um, e-seminar in the car on, on the way up to Lithgow and, and heard Jason's interview with uh, the Groundswell Gloucester people. And, and Jason asked a similar question there. And... Um, and it seemed to me that, that one of the answers given that day was similar to what I would say in that situation, that um, when you're convinced that something is right and it's something that's got to be done, that if, if the particular proposal that you're propose, protesting against goes ahead, that it will be terrible for all sorts of reasons, then somehow you just 
find the reserves to, to keep doing what has to be done. It is difficult to maintain hope in uh, some of those situations and, and I know, um, I guess I was sort of on the periphery to some extent of, of those campaigns up there in, in the time that I was there and uh, some of the people, particularly some of the um, Laird Forest uh, protesters uh, suffered burnout because um, particularly the ones who'd been there from, from the very beginning um, and were quite dispirited when after three years of intense effort it was obvious that, obvious that the Whitehaven mine was going to go, go ahead regardless. And um, I recently visited um, the North West and spoke to uh, some of the people there and, and some of them are, are quite quite tired too of um, the effort that's required to keep the campaign going even though um, they've had lots of great results in terms of uh, surveying um, farmers in the area and, and getting well into the 90s of people being opposed to the Santos project going ahead um, every time there's uh, some news about some positive development from the Santos point of view it um, it's like um, a kick in the guts. But um, we've got, got to hope that, um, that right will prevail and, um, and keep hoping and keep going.